Hi everyone, uh, joining you from the Wander Passive House project. Uh, good to see everyone, thanks for tuning in. Just uh, wanted to do a quick video this morning to show you uh, what I'm working on today, which is laying out our HVAC system, or in this case, it's really our ventilation system, which will provide our fresh air and uh, will be the source uh, of heat for the house with the small electric heater that will uh, heat the ventilation air as it's being distributed through the house. So what I'm working on today, uh, you can probably see behind me that our interior framing is now about 98% complete. We have all of our service cavities in place. All of our interior walls are in place. Uh, starting tomorrow, we're going to be laying in the plumbing rough-ins and the electrical rough-ins are gonna come next week. Um, but before those start, I wanted to lay out our ventilation duct runs to make sure that we're not gonna run into any conflict ventilation system has been ordered and will be arriving uh, in about a week and a half. Um, by then the plumbing roughens will probably be nearly complete so now's the time to make sure that there's no conflict so that uh, when the plumber is doing his work he can leave room for the HVAC ducts because we'll both know exactly where they need to go. So let me show you this here. This is um, just an example of the type of duct that's used by the ventilation system. Uh, the, the Zender product is uh, nearly identical but white. This is from a different manufacturer, just a sample I've had kicking around for a while. Uh, so this is made of a rigid plastic. Uh, it's a three inch outside diameter tube and the beauty of that is that these tubes will fit nicely into a two by four cavity wall. So if I just show you here, the wall I'm standing beside is a two by four wall and these can fit inside a two by four wall and snake through the house. When you have a longer section of this pipe, it's actually quite flexible, so it, it can turn on a fairly tight radius, so you can get it around corners and through uh, floor plenums without too much difficulty. So I'll just flip you around and show you how I'm doing the layout, even though I don't have the actual ducts on site, so that my, uh, my team will know where the plumbing runs need to go, or sorry, the ventilation runs need to go. So, starting from the top of the house, uh, we've already done the calculations using the software. Um, we've done the, the layout on paper on which rooms need uh, how much supply and how much exhaust. So what I've been doing on site is I've just been running string. And I've been using my little sample of pipe to trace cutouts through the floors um, and through important walls and labeling them. So you can see here we've got uh, two exhaust pipes that'll be coming from the ensuite bathroom, two supply pipes going to the master bedroom, one supply pipe going to the office up in the loft. And I've just run strings to kind of trace the path that each of those runs will follow. So we can see we've already got a situation right here where one of the plumbing vent stacks that's going through the ceiling crosses with the HVAC ducts that need to go there. So uh, fortunately, this is just a rough in that was left extra long. When we start working on rerouting that plumbing, we'll have to avoid that conflict. And the strings just keep tracing a rough path on where those ducts need to go until we get to our termination point, which I then label with a quick little marker just to say this is where the supply run ends. Two tubes should be arriving there. That gives you an idea of how much um, space you need to leave for those ventilation ducts. This sort of layout practice, I feel, is very important uh, to do um, kind of with intention at an early stage, but it even has to be considered um, much earlier than now, because when you're designing the project, uh, you have to leave uh, a place for all of these vents to come down, especially when you have designs that are very open and modern, as uh, our main floor is, for example, because there's not as many walls to bring these ducts down through. So. You can see with all this big wide open space, there's no walls to bring ventilation down through. And if you look up at our floor structure, because we have this split level design and big spans and narrow and thin floors, we also have a lot of structure that you see in the ceiling. Now you can't cut holes through LVLs. Structurally that's not allowed. So that means that when you have a flush beam like this with the joists hanging off of it, you can't run a ventilation run through that. You would have to come down under that and end up with a bulkhead, which would be a detractor uh, from the design. So in this house, 
we intentionally stacked all of our services on the north wall um, on top of each other so that our duct runs and our plumbing runs and all of that can come straight down into the mechanical room without having to get across the house to the other side and trying to get through those beams. So here you can see we've got um, a series of interior walls. This is for the laundry room and the powder room. And these walls are going to be chock full of plumbing runs, ventilation runs, electrical runs. Uh, they're really our service core of the house. And if I just come down, you can kind of see in the ceiling above me, I've got a bunch of strings crisscrossing through these open web joists, which is fantastic. It means we can take full advantage of the depth of the floor to run our ducts through it. And you can see if I can reach up here, how many of these ducts you'll be able to fit in one cavity, probably three per cavity in these open web joists. So that's very handy. And you can see down here how I've started to draw all of the, the, the openings that'll be required to be cut through. And over here, we've got a whole bunch more. So there's lots of tubes because ventilation needs to get all over the house. That's very important. So I need to make sure that these are all laid out. Leave some room over to the right there for a plumbing stack to come down from above. Over here, we're trying to leave some room for some you know, electrical to come up in this wall for a light switch. And in, this is where the sink is gonna go. So we need to leave room for a drain and, and the water pipe supplies. So all of this, you know, is in a very tight space. So that's why it's very important that uh, um, myself uh, being the one who's going to install the ventilation system and uh, Nathan from Ackland Plumbing and Eve from Portage Electric, we're all kind of coordinating this as a team to make sure that, uh, that it all works out really well. The floor that I'm standing on now is the mechanical room. So once we get down to the mechanical room, we're, we're home free. Then we can use the ceiling in there, which will remain open to run the ducts over to where the HRV uh, will have its um, manifolds to connect all of them to. And, uh, and we can just uh, connect it all downstairs and it'll look hopefully nice and neat and clean. Uh, a little bit like a giant octopus with all the tubes coming off of it, but uh, kind of a beautiful sight uh, if you're uh, like me and like that sort of thing. So that's just a little bit of an update um, on what we're working on right now on the Wander Passive House. The next few weeks will be a lot of mechanical system, electrical system, plumbing system installs. Um, so it will uh, be an interesting time for coordination on those. And then after that, we're going to start closing it in with drywall and finishing and uh, you will really see the house take shape. So stay tuned for that. Check out the blog at webuildahome.ca. Uh, check out uh, my firm's website at plotnonplot.ca and buildingenergy.ca. And uh, follow me on Twitter and on Periscope for more of these videos and updates. And I look forward to seeing everyone again next time. Thanks very much.